We got a cool one today, guys. Kind of cruising and reviewing nothing but real, really cruisers lately. Some four wheel drive trucks, some ride line stuff. And it's been a minute since we've got behind the wheel of something fast. So we are driving a 67 Chevelle on a fast track chassis today. And this is a survivor build for a great customer, Mike, just getting ready to deliver it. So this is kind of its last hurrah before we give it its send off. Awesome car, awesome package. This is, you know, kind of like the flagship of everything that we do, the flagship chassis. It's our fast track front, nine inch rear, and the vehicle build especially, I mean, it's kind of like the flagship Survivor Series build that we do. Although we've built like this kind of same car a variety of times, it never gets old. So this car is just, it's awesome. These 67, 66 Chevelles, they make for great cruisers. They got some good wheelbase in them, made up to the fast track chassis just really, really well. Minimal mods and uh, really an awesome package. So I'll take you from the beginning here. This car came in a little over a year ago and like everything else, I like to get behind the wheel of them and get kind of a before and after. This one was cool because it showed up and I really didn't know anything about it. Sometimes they sneak in the door and nobody says much to me about the car other than, hey, we got a Chevelle showing up, uh, it's out front. So knew nothing about what was underneath it, knew nothing about what was uh, under the hood and I just jumped in it and took her for a spin and it sucked, it sucked bad, really bad. And uh, lo and behold, I did not know but this car had virtually every single bolt on, on it. So all your tubular control arms, coilover conversion, front and rear, uh, big block crate motor with a uh, throw charger on it, a five speed external linkage, something I don't know what the manufacturer was, but uh, man, I'm sorry, Mike, you spent a lot of money and uh, it wasn't very good. And it was uh, exactly why we sell chassis and why we build survivor cars, because this car made an absolute I made 180 of a change. It is a pleasure to drive now. It's fast, it drives good, makes for a great cruiser. We ripped this thing uh, from our shop here in Mundelein off to Good Guys Columbus, Ohio on a cool little road tour. The car performed flawlessly. Now we're taking it out and we're gonna flog it a little bit. So, told you it's fast track, nine inch chassis, Fox uh, RS SV coilovers on all four corners, single adjustable, Bayer six piston brakes. And under the hood, it's a LT4 with a T56 Magnum, but it's the XL Magnum. So it comes from Bowler transmission. And the XL is kind of a cool option. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people don't know when or where to use it, but it shifts that shifter back, I don't know, maybe four to six inches. So it's a longer tail shaft. And let's use a short straight stick and puts that shifter, you know, kind of right off the wheel where you'd want it to be. So certain applications, I love it. Sometimes it helps you uh, plant a center console better in a car. We've done a tremendous amount of LT4s, uh, a lot of LT4 six speed packages. It's a phenomenal package, uh, reasonably priced for a massive amount of horsepower, great reliability, and just an overall fun, fun package. They fit well, uh, they package under most hoods of muscle cars. For this particular one, Mike was actually wanting to dial it up a little bit. So we uh, disassembled virtually everything on the exterior of the motor and machined a blower lid for it. On that blower lid, it's a piece that we've done in the past, uh, you know, 6061 aluminum, all designed in-house, machined in-house, and valve covers we designed based off of a Wegener, uh, kind of an off-the-shelf part. My boy Casey over there was nice enough to help us out and uh, we sent him a file and he did that uh, neat uh, texture and style that matches the blower lid itself. So thanks Casey, we appreciate it. And uh, everything under the hood, it's all on the motor itself. Everything is done in a satin Cerakote. Little time consuming, 
got to be pretty detail oriented got to take all the little nuts and bolts apart we took the wagner serpentine drive kind of disassembled the whole thing sandblasted all the brackets all the little components and as a finished product doing that monotone kind of look it just makes it really really tidy and really cool so if you look at a before and after of what a stock lt4 is which maybe isn't the most beautiful looking motor package for the finished product on this motor I think it speaks for itself, man. It's, it's really cool, and I'm glad that Mike uh, wanted us to go that route with it. So a product that we're trying out on this car is a uh, blip shift module. X in earring. That's right, in earring. Took me a minute to figure it out. Developed this, and it plugs into your GM drive-by-wire throttle. So when you're coming up on a turn and you're on the brakes, stab the clutch, downshift it, and you get a nice little RPM blip. That's all programmable. So you can put a USB cable into the module and you can program the percentage of throttle and really cool. So as you're coming into a turn, you know, you can slow that thing down. You're on the brake, you're on the brake. Gives you a good RPM match. So you can make that percentage of RPM as aggressive or as light as you want it. So if you're barreling into a turn and you're really wanting to push the car, kick that up and you can really rev match when you're braking hard and cornering hard if you want it as just a novelty on the street which is cool you know, typically you're used to kind of kicking it down a gear and whacking that throttle and bumping the rpms you can adjust the percentage for that but the other thing that it does is the wide open throttle mechanism on it so it'll interrupt spark and that's tied into the throttle pedal it's tied into the clutch and you can flat shift that thing which takes you a minute to get used to on a t56 that you don't feel like you're hurting the car but Pin that sucker to the floor, whack the clutch, and you can bang gears at wide open throttle. So something pretty neat. Turning radius on this, awesome. You can see I just ripped a U-turn. No tire scrub. You're not limited to where you got a three-point turn this thing to you know make it into a parking spot or on a, a normal curve like you often see. And uh, even with a pretty decent sized wheel and tire package. So forge line, front and rear, uh, 18 by nine and a half up front, 19 by 12 out back, and that's our RS5 wheel. So it's the Roadster Shop's you know, rendition of a classic five spoke style wheel. Cool cast center finish on a polished hoop with a RS kind of vintage themed center cap on them. And I think it suits the car pretty well. Just all black 67 Chevelle with a vinyl top. What looks better than just some classic five spoke wheels? But the driving experience in this is really where it's at. I've said it time and time again that it's not just the chassis, although I should say it's just the chassis. It's the seating position, it's the wheel, it's the insulation, it's everything. And this car wraps all that up and puts the perfect package together. So it's a great example of really just building a car properly, I'd say, not to toot our own horn, but got some great insulation underneath the carpet on this, uh, boom mat throughout underneath that. So the complete interior was all refreshed by our man, Steve, uh, most of it in-house. It utilizes a uh, Recaro seats that have been recovered to look like the factory Chevelle buckets. We kept the headrests on these with 650 horsepower, as you've seen in some of the other videos. Sometimes it's kind of nice when it sets you back. Door panels are pretty cool. It's always difficult when you want to package a speaker in some of these factory cars and make it look at home. Just because it's a round speaker doesn't mean that it needs a round hole. So we machine these really neat bezels that kind of blend with the original door panels and use a speaker material, a grill material, rather than just your classic perforated speaker grill. And it disguises the audio equipment, what I think really well. Some of the other tricks in this car, it's stuff we've done on a variety of Chevelles, so it is kind of a standardized package. That's, uh, it's nice that the parts are engineered already. It's nice that we have them at our disposal and we can kind of duplicate this process pretty easily. So some of those parts are the AC vents. This car did not have factory air conditioning, so there were no options for that. And when you want to place the vents on the driver, you really want them front and center. So we've machined a uh, cool little trim piece that houses two vintage air vents with a little RS logo that nests right in the middle of the dash where the factory stereo was and it blends seamlessly. It looks like an OG part and it looks really cool. Sometimes customers want a touch screen, they want nav, they want Apple CarPlay. Mike was one of those guys 
and these Chevelles actually lend themselves pretty good to it because you can fit those double din screens dead center in these dashes and it's relatively easy to fabricate a dash extension and blend them in there to where they don't look too out of place. I mean, I think it looks cool. It's certainly not a classic item, but I think it fits the car nicely. Sitting right next to that, vintage air AC controls. So again, it's a part that we've used in the past, uh, originally designed for a GTO build, but cool little billet knobs. And like I mentioned once before, we take the individual AC control knobs rather than using the factory uh, vintage air three button. And then we can space them out the way we want them, blend them into the dash. And you've got some big diameter knurled knobs that make the AC controls very simple. Center console, car was converted to power windows. So we make a bezel, used it in the past, used it again here. That packages four window switches all machine designed by Roadster Shop, usually keep them in stock. Cool little piece that lets you retrofit power windows into these cars, slide the console around to where it lands, where your shifter belongs. So as long as you've got a T56, TKO, TKX, something that uh, puts the shifter centered in the car, this will work out really well. Some of the other cool standard survivor stuff, uh, Dakota Digital RTX gauge cluster, which this is one that, man, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, and I'm still waiting for that check from Justin at Dakota, but it's cool. Always exciting to see what the next application is gonna look like. And just when you think you've kind of used them all, there's always a new car. And uh, putting them in the 67 in that RTX lineup, they're really, really cool. Looks so factory, but having the, the digital uh, display on it, super cool. So I hate to try to describe this as being simple or cookie cutter because it's the furthest thing from it. But when you come to the Roadster shop for a Survivor build, this is really uh, like kind of what we base everything off of. It's all the best components, the stuff that we know works and works really well. Even right down to the Lacara three spoke leather wrap wheel, perfect grip thickness on it, perfect dish. So seating position in this car is just spot on, which makes or breaks the driving experience. For the safety police out there, we get a tremendous amount of comments about seat belts, which I'm wearing mine, so I'm doing a good job today. But this particular Corbo harness is great for the street. You can clip in it and clip out of it really easy without a cam lock or anything that's kind of, you know, a hassle getting in and out for a daily driven car. But it's tied into a harness bar uh, directly behind me. The car doesn't have a four point cage, but that harness bar goes from quarter panel to quarter panel and ties into the inner structure and ties those belts securely right into it. Exhaust system, much like every other Survivor car, three inch stainless steel, X-pipe, Borla XR mufflers, out the back with some resonators that we fabricate in-house, makes for, and again, great driving experience. The car's not droning, it's not driving you crazy. Great highway machine, but also makes enough noise to know that you got some horsepower under the hood. is just an absolute pleasure to drive. I think this car is a really good example of something that kind of breathes, I guess, some new life into our industry. When you start looking at finding project cars, it gets tough. It's difficult to find a really, really clean project car for a 66, 67 Chevelle or any of the other popular cars. And it's also getting tough to find like really killer original paint cars so when you use the term survivor you immediately kind of think of something with lightly faded paint and man they're getting hard to find they're out there if you're chasing you can find them you can spend a few bucks and you can usually get your hands on one but looking at the future there are a tremendous amount of really clean nicely restored muscle cars out there I mean look at older restorations a car that maybe was restored 10 years ago 15 years ago and although the paint isn't show quality it presents well and this is one of those cars I, I can't tell you exactly when the restoration was done but just a really nice straight black Chevelle and in its stock form in my opinion kind of useless but taking that car and treating it as a project car swapping it over and giving it the survivor treatment 
you end up with something really cool. And I think it opens your eyes to what can be done with a lot of other vehicles. Rather than looking at uh, like the cost of maybe a $60,000 1969 Camaro that has a nice restoration and saying, well, you know, it's a lot of money, but maybe it's not enough money for something that's really high end. But what it is, is a really good investment for something that you don't have to paint. You can get through the project quickly and you can have yourself a really, really kick-ass survivor type build in a reasonable amount of time for reasonable money.